Hi everyone, this is Sean from Bid for Assets. In this video, I will be walking you through how to participate in Carbon County, Pennsylvania's sheriff sale auctions right here on the Bid for Assets platform. A sheriff sale is a public auction to facilitate the sale of property that's been repossessed due to an unpaid debt. The proceeds from that sale are then used to satisfy that debt. In many cases, this sale results from a mortgage foreclosure. Now, the first thing you'll need to do to participate in this or any auction available on Bid for Assets is register for a free Bid for Assets account if you haven't done so already. There are no monthly fees required to maintain your account, it is completely free and the registration process should only take a few minutes to complete. To begin, you'll want to go to the top navigation bar on the bidforassets.com homepage and select sign up. From there, you will be prompted to provide an email address and to create a password. That password will be what you use to log into your Bid for Assets account as well as confirm bids. So be sure to make it something that you feel confident you'll remember. From there, you will need to provide some basic contact information. You will need to confirm your phone number. And finally, you'll need to log in to the email account that you've placed on file and confirm that email address to complete your registration. Bid for Assets has a video walking you through every step of this process and you can access that video by going to bidforassets.com slash videos. You'll see here that we've got many videos walking you through the various steps of a Bid for Assets auction, including registering for an account. Now, after you've created your account, the next thing that you'll want to do is go to the landing page on Bid for Assets for Carbon County Sheriff Sales. You can do this from the Bid for Assets homepage by selecting the Sheriff Sales slash foreclosures display right here next to the map of the United States over on the right. Selecting that will display a list of counties with upcoming Sheriff Sales. From there, you can just select Carbon County to go directly to their landing page. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to here on the landing page is the display up top, which says sales date. For Carbon County or any sheriff that hosts auctions on Bid for Assets, the sales date display will allow you to view property lists based on when they are scheduled to open for bidding. So, for example, when I select January 12th, you'll see that it generates a list displaying only properties whose auctions are scheduled to open on that date. Once you've selected the auction date that you want to view properties for, you can use the arrows here at the bottom of the list to move from page to page. In this case, we only have 14 auctions currently scheduled for Carbon County, but in cases where you need to go from one page to another, you can use the arrows here at the bottom of the list to do so. Some auctions might be marked as stayed or postponed. An auction that's been stayed has been canceled, while an auction that has been postponed is being rescheduled for a later date. Leaving the show available auctions only box checked, which I've done here, ensures that you only see auctions that are still scheduled to move forward. And you can toggle it on or off at any time as you navigate through the lists. Another way to view the list of properties available for a given sales date is to download them as an Excel spreadsheet. To do that, you'll want to go next to the sales date display once again and over here to the right, select download property list. You'll also want to make sure that you're logged into your Bid for Assets account when you do this. From there, just select download and it will generate a property list via Excel spreadsheet. 
which gives you a lot of useful information. Uh, it includes, in this case, the attorney office assigned to a given property. It gives you their defendant. It gives you the debt amount that is owed on the property, the parcel number, and the physical address for the property. All extremely useful information to have when doing your due diligence ahead of the sale. Now, it's important to note that each auction date is treated as its own event and will have a deposit specific to that date. In other words, if you wanted to bid on one or more properties in the Carbon County January 12th sheriff sale, you would only need to submit a single $1,000 paddle fee deposit and that deposit will allow you to bid on all of the auctions that are scheduled to open on January 12th. If, however, you wanted to bid on an auction in Carbon County's February 9th sheriff sale, you would need to submit two bid deposits, one for the Carbon County January 12th sheriff sale and one for the February 9th sheriff sale. Remember that you only need to submit a single bid deposit for each date, but to bid on separate auctions on separate dates, you'll need separate deposits. Another thing to note is that if you submit a deposit, but you end up either not bidding or not winning any property, you will have the option to transfer that deposit over to Carbon County's next sheriff sale. So if you submitted a deposit for January 12th, end up not winning any properties, you could transfer that deposit over to the February 9th sale. You can do this after the auction directly from your Bid for Assets account by going to the My Bid Deposits section. So how do we actually submit a deposit? Once you see an auction that you want to bid on, go to that auction page. And one of the first things that you will see is an orange button that reads, click here for deposit instructions. Bid deposits are typically required to qualify for any public auction that Bid for Assets hosts. They should be sent directly to Bid for Assets, and there are two methods for you to do this, those being certified check and wire transfer. Before you obtain instructions for submitting your deposit, note that you will be required after clicking here to provide your social security number in compliance with the US Patriot Act if this is your first time submitting a deposit with Bid for Assets. After that, you'll be prompted to provide pre-vesting information detailing how you'd like any potential property that you've won to be titled. Just like with registration, Bid for Assets has a video walking you through every step of this process, and you can access that video again by going to bidforassets.com slash videos. So once Bid for Assets receives your deposit, it will be processed and you will be notified via email and your Bid for Assets message center once you've been cleared to bid. Again, if you don't win any auctions, your deposit will be returned to you via a principal e-check that will come to the email address on your account within 10 business days of the auction's close. You can print that check and take it to your bank, or you can scan it with a mobile app just like a regular bank check. Now let's take a closer look at an individual auction page from one of these sheriff sale properties and talk a little bit about due diligence. The auction page has any available information that the sheriff's office can provide to assist you with your due diligence. Neither the sheriff nor Bid for Assets will have any additional information on the condition of the property or its title, including whether the property is free of any liens. So it is very important that you complete your own due diligence before bidding on a property. This includes assessing the condition and value of the property, 
as well as any relevant information on the property's title status. Both the Sheriff's Office and Bid for Assets would recommend that you consult with an attorney before purchasing property from a sheriff sale. Bid for Assets President Jesse Loomis held a webinar on how to research tax sale properties a while back, and much of the information in that video will be relatable and helpful for your sheriff sale due diligence. You can find that video again by going to bidforassets.com slash videos. A key piece of advice that I want to mention from that video here, however, is the importance of visiting a property whenever you can. Obviously, you don't want to set foot on a property as that would constitute trespassing. But there is nothing preventing you from driving by a property and viewing its exterior. And that is a very worthwhile form of due diligence to practice whenever you can. You may have noticed uh, when we were back on the landing page that many of the sheriff's sale properties displayed there don't currently have a minimum bid, or as it's commonly known in Pennsylvania sheriff sales, an upset price. In fact, this auction says awaiting upset price. This is because the Carbon County Sheriff's Office will set the upset price for each auction in this sale based on their costs associated with taking the property to auction. Something to keep in mind is that you should ideally try to already know the maximum amount that you're willing to bid on a property before it opens at auction. This is why individual research is so important when participating in sales of this type. Once the auction opens, you can go in and start bidding. You can bid along in small increments or place your maximum proxy bid and allow Bid for Assets auto bid system to bid on your behalf. The auto bid system will ensure that you do not need to bid more than is necessary to reach the upset price and beat the second highest bidder in the auction by one bid increment. In other words, placing your proxy bid is similar to having a number in your head when you go to a live auction. And our system will bid up to that amount on your behalf, but not over. So with all of that in mind, let's talk a little bit about post-auction procedures and settlement terms. An auction's settlement terms outline the amount of funds due and the timelines for payment in an auction. Throughout the lead up to the sale and to the opening of the auction, the settlement requirements will be accessible both from the sales general landing page and on every individual auction page. You can find them here towards the bottom uh, under the section labeled settlement requirements. Once again, you can also find them here on the sheriff sale landing page under settlement instructions. We strongly encourage you to familiarize yourself with the settlement terms, as you must have the funds available to meet the payment timelines outlined in them, or you will be placed in default and forfeit your deposit. When every auction available in the sale closes, you will be notified whether you have won any of the auctions where you placed a bid. If you don't win any auctions, then no action is required on your part unless, as I've mentioned before, you want to roll over your deposit to Carbon County's next sheriff sale. You can do that once again from your Bid for Assets account by visiting the My Bid Deposits section. Now, if you have won auctions, then you will also be able to access Bid for Assets Deed Wizard tool. Deed Wizard will both allow you to provide additional vesting information for any of the properties that you've won and display settlement instructions to begin making your payment. Once Bid for Assets receives your settlement funds and deed vesting or titling information and receives that for all winning bidders in the sale, it will all be sent to the county. And at that point, the county will begin recording your deeds to complete the sale. So to recap some key points, 
to participate in Carbon County's sheriff sales, you will want to one, visit the Carbon County sheriff sale landing page on Bid for Assets and select the auction date that you wish to bid in. After you register for a free Bid for Assets account. Next, you are going to want to obtain instructions and send your deposit for the auction or auctions that you want to bid in. Remember that one deposit qualifies you to bid on the entire sale and all of the properties available in it. Next, you're going to want to thoroughly research the properties that you intend to bid on and place your bids when the auctions open. Additionally, read the auctions terms ahead of the sale and their settlement terms ahead of the sale. And be sure that you have the funds ready to complete the sale on any auction that you win. Finally, five, if you are a successful bidder, follow the instructions in your post auction email to complete settlement. Keep in mind that share of sales can be complicated. So do your due diligence and consult with an attorney ahead of the sale. In the meantime, Bid for Assets is always here to help with live customer service available over 40 hours a week. So feel free to re reach out to us at any time by going to bidforassets.com slash contact. You can also easily view our contact information by going back to the top navigation bar and clicking the contact us tab that will provide you with our customer service team's email address and phone number again feel free to reach out to us at any time until then we hope this video was helpful for you and we wish you the best of luck in your next auction on bid for assets take care